Four Wheels of English Novel The 18th century was a conducive period for the growth of English novel in England. According to Matthew Arnold, it was mainly an age of prose and reason. The ground for the growth of English novel had already been prepared by some other writers such as Daniel Defoe, Joseph Addison, and Sir Richard Steele. The rise of the middle classes, the spread of literacy and education, publication of a large number of periodicals contributed to the growth of English novel. There was also rise in the reading public, and the circulating libraries. All these things contributed to the growth of English novel in the 18th century. But the most important reason for the growth of novel is that this new literary form suited the genius and temper of the times. The heroic romances dominated the 18th century scene of fiction. John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe, and coverly papers of Joseph Addison and Richard Steele had the germs of novel. Their good-humored social satire, their eye for the oddities of the individuals, their basic human sympathy, lucid style and their scenes are the ingredients of a novel. But what they lack was characterization and plot construction. The real masters of the novel in the 18th century were the four writers, Samuel Richardson, Henry Fielding, Tobias Smollett, and Lawrence Stern. Sir Edmund Goss calls Samuel Richardson the first great English novelist and Henry Fielding the greatest of English novelists. These four masters are the four wheels of English novel, who by their joint efforts brought this new genre to such maturity. So it soon became the glory of England. Samuel Richardson is called as the father of English novel. His three main works are Pamela or Virtue Rewarded, Clarissa and the History of Sir Charles Grandison. These three novels form a trilogy of a kind and deal respectively with humble life, middle class life, and with high class life. In all these novels the method of narrative is through letters. This method is known as epistolary method. Samuel Richardson's Pamela or Virtue Rewarded took England by storm. In this novel, Richardson narrated the career of a rustic lady maid, Pamela Andrews who guards her honor against the advances of her lustful master, Mr. B. Mr. B marries her in the end and is reformed. Among Richardson's good qualities was his knowledge of female psychology and awareness of the emotional problems of common people. Richardson built his plot out of the middle class life which he knew. Richardson's aim was to turn young people away from the pomp and parody, the marvelous and improbable of the heroic romances. He has a peculiar gift of minute analysis of mood, temper, and motive. Henry Fielding wrote Joseph Andrews, Tom Jones, Amelia, and Jonathan Wilde. Henry Fielding's very first novel Joseph Andrews was intended to be parody of Richardson's Pamela particularly of its prudish morality and sentimentalism. Henry Fielding is known for his picaresque novel, Tom Jones. He is a master of plot construction. S.T. Coleridge considers Tom Jones as one of the three works in world literature which have perfectly constructed plot. There is a dramatic action in his novel. His style has a slight touch of archaism, he regards the novel as a comic epic in prose. He is famous for creating real human beings. Henry Fielding says I describe not men but manners, not an individual but species. The range of Henry Fielding is far wider than that of Samuel Richardson. Most of the novelists of the 19th century owe a great deal to the technique of Henry Fielding. Tobias Smollett's novels are also picaresque in style. They include Humphrey Clinker, and Roderick Random. The plot of the novels is loose and formless and they have no romantic relationship to character. His characters are sordid and vicious, typical of English life in that period. Tobias Smollett also added satiric characters to his novels. 
Lawrence Stern is the last among the four wheels of the English novel. Lawrence Stern wrote the life and opinions of Tristram Shandy and the sentimental journey through France and Italy. His novels are essentially stories gripping in their interest but without story end, without story beginning and without story middle. The illustration of character by humorous contrast and details is the finest part of Lawrence Stern's art. In Stern, humor and pathos are finely blended. Lawrence Stern created character of fantasy. His characters dwell in world of their own. Thus, the four great novelists paved the way for the novel of sentiments, the so-called gothic novel, the novel of doctrine and the novel of manners.